Hello, book two. Oh, it's pitch black and pouring rain and boiling hot here in Boston uh, in the beginning of November, at the end of October. Uh, and I'm still plagued with non-booktube stuff that's getting in the way <laughs> of me just sitting here making video after video after video. <laughs> uh, but I have I've, I've carved out a little time for at least a little mail. Uh, my The guests that are in and out and that are wandering all around and that are uh, lay claim to my time wanted to open the mail with me, but no. <laughs> my lame ass booktube friends come first <laughs> so it's just four packages I thought we'd do them and then I have to go on my way I will make this up to you <laughs> I promise <laughs> but anyway uh, let's see what this first one is uh, it's a thin, thin thing this is A Reckoning in the Back Country a Samuel Craddock mystery um, when Lewis Wilkins a physician with a vacation home in Jarrett Creek is attacked by vicious dogs, and several pet dogs in the area around Jarrett Creek disappear, police chief Samuel Craddock suspects that a dogfighting ring is operating in his territory. He has to tread carefully in his investigation, as lawmen who meddle in dogfighting put their lives at risk. The investigation is hampered because Wilkins is not a local. Craddock's focus is on the investigation is thrown off by the appearance of a new woman in his life, as well as his accidental acquisition of a puppy. Hmm. It's uh, that's not gonna be easy to read. I just I just recently read a murder mystery called The Dogs of Rome, uh, that was also about a dog fighting ring, and it wasn't easy to read. Uh, I have been uh, at odds with two dog riding dog fighting rings right here in Boston in the last twenty years, and uh, their their world is hideous, just hideous. It's like something out of a nightmare. Uh, it was, it was my knowledge of that world that made me so hateful of Michael Vicks when he tried to write his way out of shame, when he when he tried to write a book clawing his way back to public respectability after being a dog torturer, a dog murderer, a dog fighter, a dog profiteer. Uh, if I remember, I'll leave a link to my review down below uh, of that book. I probably shouldn't have reviewed it at all. Uh, but in in there are parts of, of Roxbury and Rosendale here in Boston where you would be foolish if you own a, a fat, peaceful, well-fed, friendly family dog. You would be foolish to let it out in your front yard, you know, to go to the bathroom without you. You'd be foolish to leave it out of your sight, that dog, because there are vans that go around um, specifically looking for such dogs. Just they're, they're friendly, the dogs, they're going to walk right up to you, you snatch them out of the yard and drive off with them. Uh, not to fight them. They're used as what's called cedar dogs, where there's a ring in somebody's basement and it's it's covered in dried blood. And the killers, the, the dogs who have been tortured out of their minds and made into killing machines, uh, need preliminary workouts. And so does the crowd. So uh, a half-blind, overfed, friendly, and now badly confused and frightened family pet is dropped into the pit so it can be torn apart by one of these animals in front of spectators. All of whom should be immediately executed. You, you find somebody there, unless they can prove they're an investigative reporter, simply kill them right there on the spot. It's about as pure a demonstration of unmitigated and unsalvageable evil as a human being can exhibit. Uh, of course, that's not the law. <laughs> the law in, in America is that you can't shoot someone simply for participating you need to find a crime uh, but those rings move around and they they sudden arrests will sometimes depopulate their leadership but they don't ever go away uh and it's it's revolting <laughs> it's it's revolting as, and you can so you can tell I, as all the goodwill of the author in the world i don't know that i'm going to be able to stomach getting from one end to the other of this book but, but we shall see i will i will certainly give it a try it comes out next year so i don't have to think about it yet uh, oh fantastic okay this is the finished copy of the great halifax explosion uh and it's it's a it's by john bacon and if look at this the uh the finished copy has one of these innovative designs where the, the cover copy is over a naked cover of just red water and just with just this banner on it explaining what the, the Nova Scotia explosion was. Uh, I think we talked about it on this channel before. It's a, I've, uh, I actually read this uh, and it's extremely entertaining. It really is. It might, it's probably 
uh, without any contest, the best account of the event that's ever been written. Uh, wow, it's got some high-powered blurbs. Very nice. Okay, and it comes out on November 7th. <laughs> that's the date when all of these November releases are coming out. Oh, my. <laughs> uh, so uh, we've got a murder mystery and some history. And we'll move on to this next one. They're all manila envelopes. I think, I think there's probably going to be a big mail shipment later today from uh, this is all UPS so from the US mail I don't know that I'll be able to re to sequester that I my, my company might want to just open that <laughs> again I will make this all up to you <laughs> uh, okay all right this is the finished copy from uh, of a book from Amazon uh, listed for publication on November 1st we've seen this already this is the house by the river by Lena Manta uh, in a, in a Finnish copy, this is I think her first English translation. She's a, she's a Greek writer, but uh, she, her work's never been translated in English before. Now, and Amazon is doing it for their Amazon Crossing series. Uh, and I I of course I've mentioned on this channel many many times the problems I have with dealing with Amazon seriously as a legitimate publisher when they are a, a pirate ship. <laughs> uh, and But but I, because I'm a dyed-in-the-wool bookworm, when I get their books, I read them anyway. Even if I don't know what I'm going to do about them, I still read them. And this was really good, even in English translation. So, uh, so it just intensifies the problem of what I'm going to do. I'll have to figure out. In the new year, I'll have to figure out a policy of some kind. Huh. And then we got this last one. This will be it for now, I'm afraid. Uh, and this might be it for the whole day. Uh, and then we'll just... We'll just resume tomorrow. If I, I think I'm going to have to fight for time tomorrow as well. It's insane. Uh, but I'll, I'll give it a try. Uh, so what have we got? Oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, this is by William Hitchcock, and it is The Age of Eisenhower, America in the 1950s. <laughs> it's a 600-page history of the Eisenhower administration and the 1950s in America. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> good. <laughs> Very good. Uh, so, uh, that's going to be the base of our pyramid, the age of Eisenhower. This comes out in the new year. It comes out in March. So, uh, I will, I think, certainly be reviewing it. So, you've got the age of Eisenhower. You've got the house by the river in a finished copy and an English language translation of a Greek novel, you have the Great Halifax Explosion, uh, and you have Reckoning in the Backcountry, uh, <coughs> a murder mystery centering around a dogfighting ring. So it's a mixed bag, and I think it might be it for today. A very short video, but I'll uh, if I can if I get another big shipment of mail and I can carve out some time away from prying eyes, then we'll go through that as well. But all the rest of it, everything else, tags and discussions and whatnot, it's all going to have to wait. <laughs> Sorry about this. Uh, but I, at least we'll get this, and then uh, we'll, we'll see what more comes down the line. Uh, <clears throat> so that's it for now, and I'll see you soon. Thank you, BookTube.